and Molly McGrath there for ESPN. She, of course, had the Alabama game Saturday, and now this one. Molly, thanks so much. It's great to see you again, and uh, everyone is so excited about this game, and uh, poor Lane Kiffin's watching it from home. Yeah, everyone's here getting ready for the game, Paul. You can see the teams are behind me, and everyone is here except for Lane Kiffin. He's home, tested positive for COVID, and I think one of the benefits and one of the things that he kept harping on is the fact that he tested positive, but his team is 100% vaccinated, so there are no players missing this game, no close contact, people who have to isolate. So that's something that his quarterback, Matt Corral, is someone who he's hanging out with every single day. That's a player who probably would have been out of the game last year if it weren't for vaccines. So it's the best of a bad situation, but Lane Kiffin is going to be watching this game from his practice facility. He told us he's going to be wearing his game day suit and he's going to be ready to go sitting there alone, watching the game, yelling at the TV, just like everyone else. And, and Molly, let's talk about what happens next for Ole Miss. I, I mean, I, I know they have a coordinator there, but, but Lane Kiffin's about as involved with the adjustments and the whole flow of the game as anyone in the country. Uh, what's, what's your feeling after, after talking to coaches and players, especially what it means to Matt Corral? Yeah, so I actually just spoke with their offensive coordinator, Jeff Levy, a couple seconds ago. Right before I got on this call with you, I saw him. And he. The, there was question on whether or not he was going to come down to the field to be there, to be with Matt Corral. But Lane Kiffin wants his coaches to be comfortable and to do what they normally do during game day situations. So Jeff Levy's going to be up in the booth. And you know Lane Kiffin is known for his audible calls and for changing things once he sees something from a defense. So I asked Jeff Levy about that. He said that he's going to be in charge of those audibles, so he's going to read a defense. He's going to call down to their tight ends coach, John David Baker. And then John David Baker is the one responsible for, you know, with Lane Kiffin, it's a whistle. With John David Baker, they're calling it a pig call. He's going to say, yee, yee. And so Jeff Levy was telling me this about the yee, yee call to Audible. And as he's telling me this during warm-ups, Matt Corral turns around and is like, what? You called me? So <laughs> it, it's something that they've been practicing all week long. They've been practicing it without Lane Kiffin, so they're really comfortable with that. I think the big question and the thing that Lane was most concerned about is the fact that Matt Corral doesn't have Lane to manage him in game. If adversity hits, you know, or if they're in a tough spot, Lane likes to look his quarterback in the eyes and manage their emotions, calm them down a little bit. He said this reminds him a lot of the championship game. What was it back in 2017 when he wasn't able to be with Jalen Hurts? And he said, this isn't as bad as with Jalen because Jalen was young and inexperienced at that time. He knows that Matt Corral can handle this. He's more experienced and he can handle those emotions. But he did assign John David Baker, their tight ends coach, to basically be the, the calmer of Matt Corral. So he's going to be assigned to talking to Matt Corral, talking him through things, calming him down when emotions and when adversity hits. Molly, I know you do games quite often in the ACC, and it's been a brutal weekend for that league. You've got some pretty strong ties to it from, a, from an alma mater standpoint as well. So uh, tell us about Louisville and, and, and how they're really uh, holding the entire league on their back right now. Oh, gosh, Paul, they're holding the league on their back. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of pressure for Malik Cunningham and company. I think what we saw last night from Florida State was um, really encouraging. We hate moral victories in college football. But with Mackenzie Milton, what Florida State was able to do to Notre Dame, I really like their chances. I think they're going to be great in the ACC. But I think this Louisville team is going to be much better than they were last season. You know, they went 4-7 and seven last year. Malik Cunningham was very inconsistent. But you look back to 2019, a little bit more of a normal year, and he had a phenomenal season. He just – he tried to do too much last year. He was trying to, to win games on his own. He had a lot of turnovers, turned over the ball 15 times. So I think we'll see a different Malik Cunningham. And I think they have a really solid wide receiver core that's been working really hard this offseason as well. So it's definitely going to be a better Louisville team than the one that we saw last year. And I think this game is going to be a lot different from that Georgia-Clemson game we watched on Saturday. This is going to be a high-scoring affair. Both of these defenses are going to be a little bit better, but you know that these teams really rely on their offenses. So this is going to be kind of an electric game to watch. Molly, before you go, and I know you have a game to do, I don't want to uh, hog your time, but you were on the sideline Saturday to watch uh, one of the most spectacular coming out parties we've ever seen in college football with Bryce Young. What was it like to, to see it and to be part of it? Bryce Young is special, Paul. He's a generational talent. I said this to some of my friends. 
he has Tua energy to him. He reminds me a little bit of Tua Tunga Bailoa in the sense that he is very calm and steady and the team respects him. They have similar personalities in that sense. And I asked Bryce Young before the game, this is a pretty big stage for your first start. Are you feeling any pressure? And he said, pressure comes when you haven't prepared. I've prepared and I'm ready to go and I'm not nervous. And I never saw any nerves. I never saw him rattled in that game. Miami was trying to get after him early and he was unflappable. He is absolutely special. And you know what, Paul? I think Nick Saban knows that this team is special because, you know, they had nine starters returning on defense. They have Bryce Young. And this is the lightest and happiest and loosest I've seen Nick Saban for years. In our production meeting, he was hanging out. He was sitting with us, hanging out a little longer than he normally does. He's smiling after the game. You saw him with that leather helmet on his head. So I think Nick Saban, he won't say it to us, but just reading his body language, he knows that he's a very special team this year. And it was very special to reconnect with, with you, Molly. It's so great to, to have you on the program uh, and to see you uh, again, even through uh, a very expensive camera. Uh, come back soon, and we look forward to chatting very soon uh, throughout the football season. Anything for you, Paul. Hope to see you soon. You got it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.